Well, good afternoon, traders. Chris Weston here, head of research at Pepperstone. So once again, just getting a quick dabble across the financial markets to see how uh, markets are shaping up, the trading opportunities that we're seeing, the dominant vibes that are that are causing price action and, and price discovery as they are. The first one, I think, which um, is probably getting less of a, a, a variance and in, in driver of financial markets is what's happening in the US electoral situation. Um, Bernie Sanders now, for the first time uh, in, in these polls, is really pulling away against Joe Biden, not just in the Iowa caucus, which comes out on the 3rd of February. Uh, there was a weekend poll that shows his, his lead is he's solidify, solidifying his dominance in the, in the Iowa caucus. But also for the Democrat, the broader dom Democrat nominee, which obviously the convention takes place in, in, in mid-July. So I just think the, the financial markets are not ready at the moment. I think they're, they're certainly not hedged in any kind of capacity for a Bernie Sanders um, Democrat nominee, let alone what's going to happen if he has a realistic tilt at taking on Donald Trump on the 3rd of November. Yeah, his idea that he's going to be taking on Wall Street, he's going to be taking on big tech, and there's going to be a number of factors around that. The market is just not ready for that at the moment. So we are going into the 1st of February. There's going to be a really important poll there, uh, the Des Moines uh, uh, slash CNN poll. Uh, that's good precursor for the Iowa numbers there. So if we do see that that Iowa caucus really going in, in Bernie Sanders' favour, those odds will dramatically tighten that he is going to take home the nominee because he's he's polling pretty well in New Hampshire and, and a number of other places as well. Perhaps somewhat, somewhat surprisingly. So I think you know in terms in, in terms of what's happening there, the market is is starting to look at the U.S. election situation much more readily. And, and what does the world look like if uh, we do see Bernie Sanders having a realistic chance at the, both the nominee and also taking on the uh, Donald Trump toe for toe in the mosh pit on the third of November? The other one, of course, is what's happening uh, in the coronavirus. Uh, you know, the, 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 the weekend news flow has obviously been much more prevalent. Uh, people are talking about the longer incubation periods, which are different from what we saw in the SARS outbreak 2002, 2003, talking about the fact that you know, there's, um, you know, this can be transmitted quite easily without any kind of signs of, um, of, 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 of what's happening in the virus and, and the symptoms there. So I think there's, there's, there's differences that are playing through. The fact, of course, is that you have seen such an aggressive uh, show of force by the Chinese in, in incubating or trying to quarantine as many people within these 14 cities and in, imposing very strict travel bans in, in Shanghai and Beijing. And for me, there's, there's absolutely no way you're not going to have a pretty sizable economic downturn on the back of that. Um, the question is, is, is how respondent will both the PBOC and the government be to try and address those uh, both on a fiscal and a monetary level? And, and ultimately, if you have a look at the daily chart of dollar CNH, you can see that it's just starting to get up into the echelons of that, the, the higher echelons of the, uh, of the bear channel. And I think, you know, if you get a break of seven, that'd be quite interesting as well. But at the moment, the CNH is weakening, which is what you would expect to see. One suspects Donald Trump's looking at that one's quite closely as well. Well, but this is the natural reaction you see when you are seeing an economy where, you know, obviously people are quite concerned about what's going to happen there. And also the consumer behaviour, especially amongst these acts, actions, are, are taking place around New Year, Lunar New Year. Now, in terms of how Asia's fared uh, today, you know, we are following, obviously, call from, from the US lead. The S&P was down 1.6%. You know, you'd seen this propensity to go into the Swiss franc and, and the Japanese yen. Of course, you're going to see that when the VIX has pushed up to 18%. Implied vol in, in FX markets, whether you look at one, um, one, one week, one month, one, uh, three month, has moved up a little bit there. But it, you know, most of the vol has been in, in equity land. As I say, the VIX has really broken out of that downtrend and you're sitting at 18%. So, of course, in that situation, people are going to shy away from carry. People want to be in those funding currencies. So that's why you're seeing the outperformance from the yen and the Swiss franc. We have seen somewhat calmer hands prevailing today. There's been a little bit of a bid coming through back in the SAFA, but of course that's the South African Rand, but of course that's just had a, a been walloped the last couple of days, and I think that will continue to be. People are looking to sell strength in, in LATAM and, and emerging market currencies more broadly. You know, you've seen the Korean one down about 0.6% today. In equity land, following on from the S&P, you know, you've seen the, S, the, the ASX 200 down 1.4% at the moment. Of course, the market was there closed yesterday, and that's something that we are playing a bit of catch up, but you know, the market is down 1.4%. Energy is getting absolutely taken to the cleaners, down about 3.1%. Materials are getting badly beaten up as well. We're having a look firmly at the oil price. You know, we're looking at copper as well pretty closely, although I think probably more closely for me, it's not just about copper, but it's also having a look at the yield curves around the world. You can see that we have inversion now between twos and fives. That's come out a little bit today, but certainly overnight in US trade, twos, fives were inverted. You've seen um, twos and tens, uh, parts of the Treasury yield curve, coming down to about 15 basis points through the 200 day moving average. We're looking at three month 10 year, which is something the Fed look at pretty closely. You know, that's been flattening fairly aggressively as well. So we're back to watching yield curves again. We're not just virologists. We're not just talking about politics. You know, we're back to yield curves and repo markets, I guess, is another thing as we go into the Fed meeting later in the week. But certainly at the moment, we are looking at those flatter curves. You know, I think if we're going to see continued weakness in the oil price, 
If we start getting down to what's been the key buy zone, that 50, 70 level, which you've seen that at least three times over the last 12 months, being the stage for a strong rally, if we see it coming down to those levels, um, you know, you expect OPEC to come and, and come out and, and try and create some sort of uh, move in the supply side. But it's a demand issue that's causing the oil price low. But if that continues to go lower, you're going to see inflation expectations lowering. I think those yield curves at the long end will flatten out and that's going to have a higher ramification into, into volatility. But you are seeing people looking to sell rallies in EM currencies relative to the yen and relative to the Swiss franc. The yen still prefers my, my, my favourite beast there. In terms of news, other than what we've been talking about, I think it's really interesting ahead of tomorrow's Australian CPI numbers uh, that we have seen a, a pretty poor, well, actually it's a disgusting or disastrous NAB business confidence numbers. That's got into negative territory. That's trading at the lowest level since 2013. We've seen the implied prospect of a rate cut in February turning up to 29%. Um, and people have been quite you know av avid sellers of the Australian dollar in that capacity. Capacity. I think that, that's mispriced. You get a poor CPI number tomorrow, both on the trim mean and the CPI and the headline number, and you're going to probably see that back up towards 35, 40 percent. Let's have a see what happens there. Obviously, good numbers. The market's pretty short Aussie dollars at the moment. You're probably going to get a, a fairly rapid move up there, and obviously the the, the RBA being no rush to cut rates in that in that February meeting. Most of the uh, economists have pushed that out to February anyway. So a lot of tensions going through markets. We're trying to understand. The, the, the economic fallout that happens from the coronavirus, there's absolutely no visibility for us to make those modelling assumptions. Our, our ability to price risk at the moment is thrown out. Yeah, there's a lot more to play out in this story, unfortunately. Uh, and in that situation, you know, order book dynamics take hold. You know, we're, we're, we're sellers of risk. There's no one buying. And of course, you get a protracted situation there.